Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Bernadette Thompson. She is a, a spiritualist, and she is part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast with us, and she focuses on ancestral and genealogy, and she's a spiritualist, and she digs deep into the soul, into the spirit, and she helps people connect, connect with their past, connect with a lot of different things. And today she has some great advice and she has some great things to teach you to help you elevate into the spiritual world and connect with souls and people and, and to really understand who you are, what you can do for yourself and to help you grow as a person. So Bernadette, tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do and, and what your show is about today. Well, thank you, Stacy. Um, today, I wanted to talk about, uh, I'm so glad to be here, one. It's just, you know, I just feel very blessed. And today, I wanted to talk a little bit, a little bit more about ancestral trauma and help people understand what it actually looks like in the lives of your ancestors, you know, give you kind of an idea. Um, and to help us uh, kind of know that, as we go through our experiences in this lifetime, that um, it is, uh, you know, there's ways to look back and to feel some comfort knowing that um, others that came before you yeah. have gone through it and, and the strength and resilience um, is kind of amazing. And, you know, one of the things um, we had talked about is that when, when we um, have this idea, you know, we all have this idea of what our lives are going to be like yeah. and and then something may happen and we may experience a great loss um it may be a we a, something traumatic or you know suddenly our lives have just uh changed and there's not and and so that feeling of who we thought we were and what our life was going to look like is is gone and and we have this um, this such this feeling of loss and trying to understand who we are now. Yeah. And it's one of the things that I work with when that, when I'm um, helping people understand it's, it kind of draws people into wanting to know about their ancestors. Yeah. When you lose that sense of um, knowing you know, we kind of feel solid, I, you know, I, not everybody, but as we go through our life, you know, we have this plan, we see what our, what our parents did and what our siblings did or, or whatever. And, yeah. and when that, and when that changes, um, we just feel this great sense of loss. And so people will come and I often tell them as we look back and understand our ancestors, it gives us um, this understanding of us of our lives in our lives today. Yeah. And so I wanted to share a little bit about what ancestral trauma is. Yeah. We we know trauma trauma is something that when we experience it um, it is something that happens that's that's dramatic in our life, and it can come from the as we talked earlier the, from the loss of something. It could be you know loss of a loved one, uh, a divorce. It can be um, a natural disaster um, for our ancestors. It could be a famine. It could be war. Um, all kinds of trauma came from uh, a lot of our ancestors went through that type of trauma. And trauma is something that our bodies and our minds are not able to understand. Yeah. We have difficulty in putting it, um, putting, understanding it physically and mentally and spiritually yeah. and, and often can leave us um, confused. And so we, um, so that's kind of what trauma is. Right. And it, it, you feel it in the sense that extra anxiety, or you may feel it in the sense that um, you just don't feel like you can connect with people or you have a lot of depression. And some of this can be passed down. And we've talked about this, that ancestral trauma, science tells us that ancestral trauma changes the way our genes express themselves. Yeah. And that can be passed down. Mm -hmm. um, they first, I shouldn't say first, but one of the biggest studies they did were in the descendants of the Holocaust victims right. and how the, the uh, children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, how they saw these trauma reactions that they were having and they hadn't experienced the trauma. Right. So when I help people to under, to look back at their families and I help them build their family tree, 
we look at all of their lives and we see there's so much information out there that you can find about somebody, um, about the life that they led, that you can begin to understand the trauma that they experienced. And I wanted to use, um, I'm going to use my own family because I have a lot of details mm -hmm. and, and that's what's helpful. But my dad, um, my dad was orphaned at age five and six years old. He was born in the early 20s and he, um, his father died when he was five and his mom, his mother died when he was six and wow. they both died of tuberculosis. Oh, wow. So tuberculosis was very, was around at the time. They didn't have, um, they didn't have the antibiotics. And what they actually did was, uh, I remember that my grandfather, and we have lots of pictures of this, was sent to a sanitarium upstate New York because the air was cold and clear. And they felt that that would help them. Uh, for the most part, a tuberculosis is a lung disease. Mm -hmm. And so they felt that the, the clear air would help them. So my, you and my, my father had a little brother, Larry. So it was Frank and Larry. My dad was Frank and Frank and Larry. And um, so they were left, they were orphaned. Wow. And my grandmother was one of five girls. There were five um, children and they were all girls. And two of her sisters and their husbands took the boys and raised them. Nan wow. and Bob raised them during the school year and Peg and Tom took them during the summer. They lived close to the water. Mm -hmm. And so they would take them during the summertime, but the family was, you know, they were together and I knew this about them. You know, I knew this, um, you know, and so I knew this, you know, knew that story. Yeah. But it was, you know, my dad truly suffered his whole life and he would get very emotional at times. And, um, and he always brought his mother up. Right. And I think maybe because he remembered her more, Yeah. She, you know, she, he was six years old and he had memories of her. Right. And so there was always this deep sense of loss that he had. And when, when my great aunt, my great aunts passed away when I was in high school. So I was about 16, 17, 15, 16, 17 years old when right. the two of them passed away. And they were my grandparents because I didn't have grandparents. So they were my right. grandparents. And when Nan passed away, it was Nan, my uncle Bob went up into the attic and brought down all of these pictures and all of these things that belonged to my grandparents, pictures of my grandmother and pictures of them as my dad was seeing pictures of him as a child in his mother's arms, in his father's wow. arms. And he was so, he couldn't, you know, the, he was in his fifties and he'd never seen these pictures. Wow. Because they, you know, at the time, the way people de dealt with trauma, mm -hmm. it was, let's put it away. Mm -hmm. We don't want to remind them. We don't want them to see it. Yep. So instead of him being able to process it and see these beautiful pictures, I was, I was seeing my grandmother and my grandfather for the first time. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was amazing, but I remember being upset with my, with Nan, with my great aunt Nan, because I'm like, why would you do that? Why would you hold these out and not show them yeah. to, to him and to his, um, to uncle Larry? Um, and, and, you know, she, and she was, my aunt Peg was kind of the party girl of the two of them. She, when we went to Peg's house, we had hmm. um, Coca-Cola and Hershey bars yeah. and played Nasta. <laughs> Nan's, when we went to Nan's, we took baths and ate lunch and took naps. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we always wanted to go to Peg's. So Nan had this kind of, you know, um, kind of like a curmudgeon, like she was the, you know. Yeah. So, but as I began to do the ancestry and look back at this family, what I discovered was an amazing story about a story about these five girls. So I found them, the first time that I found them was in the, the 1900 census in New York City. 
Wow. And they, and I knew it was them because it was the five girls all in a row. And I, and I knew that was, you know, all of their names. And, you know, at this point, I didn't know their mother's name. I didn't know their father's name. I knew nothing about their story. The only story I knew was the story of my grandparents. And when I looked at this census record, what was strange, it was the mother was there and the five little girls, yeah. the youngest was only uh, one at the time. Wow. And there was no father and the mother was listed as a widow. Oh, so wow. here, so here I learned for the first time that they were, they were certainly orphaned by their father, but, yeah. um, you know, they, so it was shocking to me to see them in this state that they, yeah. I, and I was able to look further um, by looking through other senses. I mean, actually looking through death records and I didn't know his name. His name was Michael Clancy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of Michael Clancy's. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know his name at the time, um, but I, I knew his name was the last name was Clancy. Right. And I was able to find a death record that showed the address that they were living at. So I oh, knew- wow that this was him. Yeah. And he had, he had died from like a pneumonia or a flu or something at the time and left these five girls. Nan was the oldest and she was 10 and the baby was one. Wow. So, yeah, so they were, and the next census that I was able to find was the 1905 census and which was a New York state census. And I found them again, but in the census, it was the mother, it was my um, grandmother, Catherine, and Nan, and the other little girls were all in an orphanage. Oh, wow. So they had gone in into an orphanage. I was able through records to find them in the orphanage listed. Yeah. They listed them as inmates, which I thought was strange, but that was because we think of that as someone who's yes. in prison, but an inmate is listed as anybody that's living in an institution. Got it. Okay. So they were all living in an institution. Um, they were living in an orphanage and um, Nan, I think at that point was old enough that they allowed her to be with her mother. Yeah. Um, but then in 1900, I mean, not 1900, when I got to 1910, I mean, this whole story of the family opened up that the girls stayed in the orphanage until they were able to, to move out. Um, I found a record that my grandmother became so sick, my great, yeah, um, my great grandmother, my father's grandmother, yeah. that she was hospitalized and never lived with the girls again. And she wow. also died. So these girls were orphaned. And Nan, the one, the curmudgeon of the family, yeah. kept them together. And so as they were released from, as they were released from the orphanages, they, um, she got an apartment in Manhattan and the girls lived, I found them in 1915 with these great pictures and they were living and working and Nan was the head of household <laughs> and, you know, and the, and the girls were all there. Wow. And so when, so I realized what trauma this family had been through. My grandmother, who the one that had passed away and, and left my father, was in an orphanage for over 12 years, as was wow. her sister. And so, and I believe that she may have gotten tu tuberculosis there mm -hmm. because tuberculosis can stay in your body yes. for a long time before it comes out. So as I looked back and I'm feeling this, this, um, anger and upsetness with this, my great aunt who had passed, you know, yeah. she had passed away right. um, about not sharing all these things. I realized when I found this story is that she was protecting them. Mm. She was doing what she knew as someone who had, had experienced tremendous loss as a child. Yeah. She was trying to protect them and to provide them and to provide Frank and Larry with um, a life that was joyful and, yeah. 
And there was a lot of joy. You know, we have so many pictures of a happy life. And I knew them as my great aunts and uncles, but they were like my grandparents. Yeah. So I share that because it tells you the type of trauma that families ha- could have gone through. Right. And, her, and their parents, the six girls, their parents were Irish immigrants. They were famine families. Mm-hmm. So when they were living in New York City, they were in a tenement, which was, so they were living with other families that had no nothing. Yeah. And, when, and when the girls, um, and when they lost their dad, the Catholic orphanage, you know, the Catholic church came in yeah. and took the girls to help them. Right. Uh, and it's such a sad story. But it it left me as I was going through the trauma of my husband being so ill with alcoholism and losing him after a really difficult four year battle. Yeah. Uh, finding this story gave me a sense of um, a, a resilience. Mm-hmm. That, you know, I, I saw that they came out of their trauma and yeah. I saw that not only did my father, even though he had sadness in his life about yeah. losing his mom, he raised eight children and was all successful and had 21, you know, was the grandfather of 21 grandchildren. Wow. And so, you know, I share the story as a way of understanding why it, it why or how you find out kind of who you are. Yeah. And I was able to, to, um, to lean on that resilience and mm-hmm. lean on that strength and know that there were um, triumphs. She, Nan got those five girls together in an apartment in New York City. Oh, and they're, they were like, um, you know, one was a telephone operator and one was a, you know, they were all doing it kind of um, yeah. club type jobs. Right. But you know, I think of the old telephones where they were pl- plugging in the, yeah, know, yeah. And listening to the conversations, uh-huh. you know, and they, and the girls married. And interestingly, um, none of them had children except for my grandmother who wow. passed away. So I don't know if that came because they may have suffered from um, uh, famine. You know, they didn't, they may have not been well as children. Yeah. Or whether it, or what the reason was, but um, just my aunt, I mean, just my grandmother, Helen had children, but the others raised them as their own. And right. um, so I just, I share that kind of, that so that we all know that we have those stories yeah past it's amazing you know we don't realize you know um you know what our family and our ancestry went through especially and and there was a lot of challenges the the farther you go back there's so many things that occurred so many different things that occurred and they got through it all you know and they did handle things differently and they thought differently and they were you know, and I always admired actually, you know, my, my ancestors and, and that whole era, because the way they handle things were just that made, it just blew me away how well they were able to go into trauma and they overcame it and they were very resilient and, you know, but they got through it. They all got through it, you know, and uh, yes, there was their ups and downs and big challenges across the way, but overall they got through it. Mm-hmm. And it's so true. And um, it is, it's part of the spiritual side of, um, I know that, you know, their spirits are around me and, you know, they left me the breadcrumbs as I, the, as, as the genealogist, you know, I use that breadcrumb all the time, but it's really what it's like because you're looking back and you find yeah. one thing and you find another thing and they left that story. And so that, um, you know, for future generations and I can share that. So I am about to, I have a granddaughter that is days away from being born uh-huh. and, and, you know, she will carry that. And, you know, my grandson will carry that story. And as you spoke last week, we were, you know, before we were talking about your, um, the ones that had been in the war and, you know, the making the decisions to leave and doing it to, um, so that the family would, would 
survive and that we would continue. So it is, it's a special thing to, to know that it definitely comes with some sadness. You know, my father experienced it. I wish we had had this conversation about, I wish I knew more that wasn't talked about. It was kind of, it's in the past. And so it's part of wanting to open it up. But one of the reasons that I think it's so important is to, to um, open up this, open up these stories so that we um, feel connected and yeah. feel part of, of um, especially when we are at that time in our lives, when something may dramatically change that we, yeah. we don't have control over. So I feel it's true. Very mm-hmm. true. You know, and especially when it's, when we are experiencing, um, something like, you know, the death of a love, the death of a spouse, or a parent or something that the change feels like you've lost a limb. And, or, and so it's so dramatic that you can't imagine that you have to move forward in this, what feels like an empty space, yeah, that you have to fill it. And so it, we use the tools, we try and use the tools around us. And, you know, we've talked about how good, how wonderful getting some therapy is. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we need more. Yeah. And, and having, taking people through this journey of looking back is often very transformational for them and helps them, you know, they get, they feel this sense of, um, they feel lifted. Yeah when it, when it happens. And when, when I discovered all of these pictures, which I now have, a lot of them are on my website and can you see these pictures of them young and at the beach and, you know, things like that, that we had, you know, hadn't seen before. Yeah. Um, It, it opens up, you know, and it's just a great way of knowing that they survived. Right. You know, it is. So that's why, um, uh, you know, we need to have those conversations around trauma and know that uh, traumatic experiences can, um, we can, we can understand them. And, and when the emotions are passed down, when we know the story, I, you know, I could understand when I knew my, my great um, aunt's story, I could understand why she acted the way she did. Right. So that's kind of a, um, a good thing. Yeah. And then we talk it, you know, I want to then bring the conversation around to um, our spiritual, our spiritual side. Yeah. And the way that I connect the two. So I love that when I look at the ancestry, it feels like I'm standing on solid ground. Right. Because when I, because the stories are there and they're real. Mm-hmm. And you know, this is something that they went through. Yes. And when we're connecting with spirit, it feels um, a little less solid. Yeah. We're not quite so sure that we are experiencing a connection with our family or that we are um, f- experiencing, you know, that we are, you know, maybe it is an angel or it is a guide or something, you know, something that you feel like you're getting some type of a connection that you're feeling. And the way that I feel it connects is knowing when you get to know your ancestors, when you get to know them really as people and you feel a connection to them, you begin to to, um, feel them on the other side. They're the closest connection that you have they are the right. they are the ones you know certainly the the family that you may have lost that you knew but if you if you don't have someone that you lost close your mm. ancestors you know they are there and they're they're surrounding you and um and guiding you you know on the other side so right. we we bring that story of them we, you know, we, I keep, I have a tendency to do this, to go in one direction, to look to the past yeah. and go this way, to look, to look to the future, but it is, it's a circle. Yes. You know, it's, it's really a circle and that we are spiritual beings that are in this, this life here on right. earth. 
living this life, which is a very real human experience. And um, our emotions are human and every bit of it is human. Right. Um, but then when the time comes that we, we cross over, we then will be the ancestor someday. Yeah. To our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, our great great grandchildren, and right. we will be guiding them and helping them. And so, again, we talk about you know how do we make that connection? How do we continue to um, to foster mm -hmm. and feel that connection to spirit? Right. Um, and so we've you and I we've talked about meditation is mm -hmm. one, is one way. And one of the ways, you know, I actually looked up, um, you know, meditation can be sitting quiet, yeah. but using, we can, there are other ways that we can find to meditate. Yeah. Have you ever used any apps to, to you know, um, and uh, a meditation app that has either music, meditation music, or um, uh, a guided meditation? Have you ever used those I've used one that um that has it had different musics on it and it had someone talking in the background so it was kind of guided you know and they were slowly trying to calm you and they had the common music in the background or they had certain sounds like rain or maybe the ocean or you know something that was very soothing or calming and then they would talk to you and they would kind of guide you along and I found that very useful I found that very um refreshing yeah, you know, there are there are a few apps that I have used um, when I first started meditating. And, you know, the, I think the first app that I used, it's called Insight Timer. Okay. And if you, you look for it, if you look it up, it looks like a singing bowl or a little, you know, um, and it is, there are in each of these apps that I, I wanted to mention, there's an Insight Timer is one, mm -hmm. Headspace is another, and there's an app called Calm. Okay. And all three of these apps have, um, they are, they have free, there's a free side to it. There's a side that you can pay for as well if you want to yeah. go deeper or there's something, but there's free meditations on there that you can use to kind of um, listen and settle yourself right. and begin to allow yourself to feel, um, feel that spirit connection mm -hmm. and, you know, feel the calmness. I actually, in one of our, our uh, times together, I would love to do a little meditation. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. You know, maybe we can end on it. Well, maybe the next time when we can end on a meditation so yeah. that people can, can feel it and leave knowing that, um, you know, there's, there's just a way to, there is a way um, to settle down. And again, it is, I know that uh, grocery lists and all those things come in and I don't, you know, you can still be in a meditative state and have things come to yes. your mind. So um and so I love that. And one of the other things that I wanted to talk about, and it related to me in meditations is I love listening to Native American sounds. Mm -hmm. So Native American flutes or yes. Native American drumming. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different um, indigenous cultures out there that have um, certain music. And that can be very... Um, that is a way that you can really draw you into that culture. Right. And some of us feel, I feel very drawn to ancient cultures. Mm -hmm. um, I feel very, you know, I, I tend to, you know, watch on TV. I'm interested in uh, the, you know, l learning about the, the um, pyramids yes. and the culture around the pyramids and learning about, uh, you know, places like Machu Picchu and, yeah you know, places that um, are, and also are, you know, Native American traditions. And I yes. love, you know, I've visited different Native American places and it is, those places can bring spirituality into you. Yeah. Um, in a way that you may not be able to feel it when you're sitting in your living room. Right. Um, and it is all part of this experience, this spiritual experience that we're trying to share with, with, you know, that we, you and I talk about that we want to share with those that are listening. Yeah. Because, um, 
being a spiritual person is uh, really has a huge side to it. I mean, there's so much that you can experience. Yeah. Um, and listening to meditations is a way to kind of see what you're drawn to. Yes. You know, there are different, um, you know, it may be something, uh, some Buddhist chanting, some people, I was um, with a friend and we were talking about what they were drawn to. And I was, we were in Arizona and I was so drawn to the Native American yeah. and to the, to the mountains. And uh, we were actually, actually in Sedona. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's, I love is, Sedona. Yeah, is familiar with with the the vor the vortices. The vortex, the vortex. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking about that, and she said she was more drawn to Buddhism. That she didn't, you know. So we each, and you know, some people will talk about past lives and those types of things, which is definitely part of the spiritual conversation. Yeah. Um, but this is one way that you can help you kind of feel how you are connected, like yes. what, you know, where you are connected. Yes. And it helps you tap into a, a place in your heart. Mm -hmm. um, when you feel spiritual connection, you feel it, you feel it in your heart. It's a mm -hmm. heart centered. Mm -hmm. uh, we often think that it is in our heads, but it, when you feel it, it truly is a heart, it's a heart centered. Yes. Um, and when you hear music or you have a sign from a loved one or something comes in that makes you feel that spiritual connection, it can happen in church. Yeah. You know, so going to church or going to temple or that can be a way for some people that is a, it can have produce a spiritual experience that will stay with you. Yeah. And, um, so I just want people to open up and understand that while when I talk about the ancestry, it is all connected to understanding how who we are as spiritual beings yeah and how that we can release trauma and by understanding more and releasing trauma that that helps us open up more right. and um and understand there's more for you to live more for you to do in this lifetime yeah you know and i say that um even if it's an 80 year old right there's still more, yes. you know, there's still, um, a few years ago, a friend of mine had told me, uh, his mom had passed away and she was in her nineties and her, his, and his dad was still living. His dad was, I think 93 at the time. And his dad has just recently passed away, but he had another four or five years yeah. that so even, you know, that he was, living and as sad as he was that she was gone he had a happy you know a happy five years yeah in his um so you know it's just a conversation that I want to open up about all different types of spirituality and all different ways of understanding how we are connected with spirit whether it's our ancestral um and knowing our ancestry that gives gives us that deep feeling yes also connecting on the other side I do feel I feel it you know it's funny how you and you mentioned about how you feel drawn to the past and the, the ancient history and that's all stuff that I've always been intrigued with since I was a young child I always loved the pyramids and and countries like your different parts of Europe where there right. so much of the history is preserved and you can go there and everything you can you could see everything just the way it was you know thousands of years ago like stuff like that always intrigued me mm -hmm. always you know there was something about it I don't know just drawn to me and then it was funny because one time I was in Florence and I went to this museum and I had a dream the night before. And I, I remember visualizing it was like a, it looked like a constitution type, like a document. And all I could keep hearing in, in the mu was this music in the background. I couldn't tell if it was Italian or if it was Spanish. And I woke up 
And then I went to the museum with my family. The same document was in a glass case. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, I, I do feel like there is connection that, you know, are we, you know, I think there is past lives and I think, I yes. think there is, um, I think we do connect with our ancestors and we do connect with, you know, um, you know, pe people that we don't even realize, you know, like right. sometimes, you know, there are times where I've gotten readings and people have told me that my grandmother who, who lived in Greece that I never got to meet because she died before I was born was always watching over me, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so they are watching over us and they, they are around, you know, sometimes we just don't know, but I think maybe through meditation, like you mentioned, the meditation yes. apps, and we can connect and maybe get, uh, you know, if we use our heart, right. We can actually connect with them and actually right. start to feel them and maybe even interpret the messages they're trying to send to us. Right. Right. And that is what it, that's what this is. That's what this is all about is helping to. And, and um, when I went to Ireland, I felt so, I mean, I felt the, felt the spiritual connection immediately. Yeah. And I mean, it was like, I had body had chills. Like, you know, I walk into a church or to, and being a genealogist, I love a good graveyard. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I love, you know, I mean, there's so much and we are um, often people when they know what, where they came from, they want or they're drawn to go back to that city yeah. or to that country to feel that history, because like you, you will feel it. And if you are connected spiritually you can have an experience like you had where you suddenly see something that, you know, was or comes in a dream to you that you were connected to and you can see it. So all of this, you know, this conversation around is all about understanding that we are part of a bigger universe, yes. really part mm -hmm. of a bigger universe. And allowing ourselves to open up to um, spirit in a bigger, in a bigger way. And I, I think that is kind of um, where we want to just continue to take the story. And I want to continue to ask people, you know, if you want to share something or you want to talk about something that you think would be good for us to be talking about, or you have a question, a spirit uh, connection question, you know, to send an email to Bernadette at tellmeourstory.com and I, we can talk about it and we can yeah. research it for you. And uh, because those spirit connections are out there. And if you go into an old church, whether it's an old church in the United States or an old church yeah. back in, in uh, you know, England or in Lithuania or... Yeah anywhere um you will you will feel the stones will talk to you right. the energy of the the right. ancestors stays in the in the stone and um it's there so it's yeah. is this is all about opening up to more so i hope um I, you know i would love it if people had questions and want to so we will add that we will talk a little bit more about uh, the ancient civilizations and how we can connect and what, um, you know, maybe some experiences that uh, people have had around. I think, you know, many, you know, I've heard many people talk about, even I've experienced, you know, that deja vu where you walk, you know, I, even when traveling in, in certain places, you know, like when I went to Italy, when I went to Florence, it was, a, it was like when I first went to Florence for the very first time, it was like, I've been there before. And it was like a very weird feeling. It was like, like, a, yeah, I, I know that I've been here, but this was my first time here, but it didn't feel like my first time here. It feels like I, I was there many times, you know, that I knew the place. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so it, it, it's funny how things work like that. And, and we don't realize that our subconscious, you know, where mm -hmm. our subconscious has been and what we've experienced right. and what we have in our subconscious. But we do have the ability and, you know, to put yes. yourself, like you said, in meditation, to relax right. yourself. And to actually reconnect and 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 to actually get messages, because I think the more relaxed we are, the more open to the spiritual world we are, the more messages that will come through. Yes, and they do, they do, and it definitely 
will begin um, begin to open up because I think so many of us are, are, and I know I was, you know, I just kept asking and asking. I kept saying, send me a teacher, send me, you know, just because I, I wanted to open this, um, you know, this up. And, and it often happens when we're struggling, you know, it mm. often happens when we've hit that time of our life that, you know, we, the life we were headed in one direction and it goes completely in a different direction. Yeah. And so you feel that sense of loss and, and not knowing what the future holds for you. And yeah. so it is it, understanding the spiritualness and how we are all connected and how they and how you can connect, um, I think is just a gift that we can give people and just to continue to have the conversation and, and let it open up even to more. Yeah. Now, if someone's going through so much trauma and they feel so overwhelmed, what or do you have any suggestions on what they could do to try to open themselves up to a, a state of calmness where they could actually start to let go of any of the negative emotion caused by the trauma so they can open themselves up to the spiritual world you know even when we're going through trauma if we ask the spirits for help they will come and help us mm -hmm. but is there anything that we could do or any suggestions when someone feels overwhelmed they, they want to connect to the spiritual world they want help and you know what do they do they you know it is every it's they're, it, they're going to learn it's learning a set of skills mm -hmm. to because each time um as they as they practice it is it is you know understanding that you were part of something bigger right and you're what you're feeling in that moment is the your humanness to the greatest degree yeah and and it is being able to allow yourself to know that there that um you are bigger than the you know the trauma that you are going through but in in if it is you know we've talked about having children that have had panic attacks yeah you know, and it's something like that you know there's that's a, a, a harder thing and it's you have to use tools that will help you calm down and just try and breathe slowly and do and do those types of things yeah but as if it's things that just keep bubbling up and all of a sudden you're you know you suddenly have that you know it feels like it comes back in and and um it, uh, like that's a cloud cool. comes over you yeah. again is just allowing yourself to use the tools like okay let's try and put a little bit of music on or let me go for a walk. I know that when David was very sick, my husband, and he was suffering from alcoholism, and there were many um, dramatic, tumultuous moments of his um, illness. Right. And, and I remember, you know, thinking to myself, how am I going to get through this moment? And, and um, going for a little bit of a walk, but always asking spirit, like, please, please help me breathe this one in, like, help mm. me, what, what can I do to, and they will, it may take a few minutes, you know, I ask for something else to think about, like, let me think about something else. Um, things like that is, and that's how spirit interacts with you when you are struggling in those in those trauma yeah. in those trauma times and it it's it will come back but the more that you practice doing this the quicker that you'll be able to move into all right maybe your meditation has gotten a little bit better or just i'm going to walk and i'm just going to i'm going to talk to god or i'm going to talk to my mother who has passed or i'm going to talk to whoever it is that you may know is on the other side yeah. like I, i'm struggling i can't do this i need i need this to be released right. and it will help i promise you it will help it will help so that is what and continue to do if you you know as we have said getting getting therapy is helpful and doing the things that um, but coming back and listening to podcasts like this understanding that there are people who share what you have gone through and right. know that um you know these difficulties can be um, that we can grow through them yeah so many people want to use the you know we i'm grieving i have to learn how to live with it yeah. It's really learning how to grow through it. Right. It, it will stay with you, but you know, you will, that, that loss doesn't leave you, but you grow through it and you'll surprise yourself yeah. how 
um, how you'll be able to talk to them and say, look at what I'm doing. Can you believe yeah. how far I've come? Right. You know? And so um, whomever it is that you, and if it's an angel that you feel you can talk to, a grandparent, you know, the, the divine, um, higher, you know, your higher power, um, whatever it is that you feel you connect with to yeah. the other side. I had, I just want to share this. I had this, um, this 88 year old. Oh my goodness. She has since passed away. And I was teasing her one day and I said to her, I said, Ellen, um, when you get to heaven and she said to me, Oh, I'm, I'm not going to heaven. She said, I'm going to be cremated. So, <laughs> so, and I said, Ellen. so we started to talk about heaven and she said, no one ever talked to me about heaven before. Wow. And so I started to have that conversation with her so that she wouldn't fear and that she knew that somebody would be there to greet her. And that, um, and a couple of weeks later, she said to me, she said, you know, I think I know what heaven is. She said, I've been in an airplane and I know what it's like to be up in the clouds. Mm -hmm. And that is what was giving her comfort. So that, so know that you don't have to have a belief that the person sitting next to you has. Exactly. And you know, that you can share any, any belief, um, anything that makes you feel as if you are connected. Did. And I know Ellen looks down on me. She has sent me signs, you know, and, and so she appreciates because she is in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's really, you know, what you perceive it to be and whatever brings you a sense of fulfillment, a sense of joy, a sense of relief. Right you know, and it isn't, it, 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 you know, everyone has their own perception. So you can't compare to what your beliefs are because you're a totally different person. You feel right. differently, you think differently, you know, you're on a different level than the other person. So, you know, you're going to think, you're going to think differently, you know, and your right. perceptions are going to be differently. So it's not, you know, people shouldn't be influenced by what others think. They should really do what's right for them. And right. I really, I, I really think it's important that people open themselves up to spirituality because I feel yes. like it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, a new way of living a new way of life. Cause you see, mm -hmm. you see what's ahead of you and um, it's, it's amazing. It's a, it's a connection and a feeling and, and what you'll feel in, in the spiritual life is, is nothing compared to yeah what the earth life is, is, but, you know, it's just getting there. And some of the steps you took, you know, you mentioned today, I think are excellent. And yeah. if you, if you had to take some of those and just make a couple takeaways and emphasize on some important parts, what would you like, you think that you'd like the listeners to really uh, learn from what our discussion well, One was? is just what you, one is what you said, which is that we all come from different backgrounds. So, and you may have come from a background where there was absolutely no religion or absolutely no spiritual, you know, right. and that doesn't mean that you don't have that. Yeah. So that is probably the most important. Um, I think it's also that, um, you know, that we, we all experience trauma. We, trauma is passed down to us and we experience it in this life and that, it is important to look for ways to relieve that those feelings that that fear that anxiety that come that comes to you and use some of the spiritual tools yeah, is helpful yeah. um, literally talking to somebody on the other side please you know asking please hear me please send me a sign please let me you know um, help me release this this anxiety yeah. are, are truly you know, things that you can, you can do, everybody can do. Right. And to know, to still know that looking back to our ancestors, um, that there is, you know, that's who, that's who's on the other side and, and understanding what they went through, what, what healing it did for me yeah. to know that this great aunt Nan, who, you know, we all thought was the troublemaker turned yeah. out she was the angel that kept them all together. And, yeah. you know, and that it made me understand that, I, you know, I can get through this. Right. So, yeah, exactly. And, and to join us the next time that we're together.
Yes. Oh, you know, we wanted, we were talking about books. Yes. We were talking about books. Book yes. so th there's two books that I would talk about that I would in this, and we'll keep, sh I'll keep sharing some books. Um, one of them is uh, um, called Into the Light. And it's real life stories about people that when they're getting, we're getting ready to cross over. And it was a, a doctor named John Lorma. And Stacy's going to put it in the notes so that people have it. But he he was somebody that he was a hospice doctor. So he was there when people were crossing and he wow. would talk with them about the, you know, what was going on. And they would share with him who was there, who was visiting, who was helping them and getting them ready to cross over. And sometimes it was angels and sometimes it was families and sometimes it was um, it was Jesus or so it can be a religious person. It can be just family coming to to guide you to the other side but if you um, have lost somebody and want to know did they make it over safely this is a great book to to listen to um, or read um, and then the other is about opening up to yourself as a, a spirit as a soul and it's called the untethered soul and the author is Michael Singer, S-I-N-G-E-R. And that is just about opening yourself up spiritually. It was one of the first books that I ever read and definitely sent me on a journey to want to learn more. So I'm going to try and share books that helped me grow spiritually and also helped me um, understanding of, of uh, the connection we have with those who have crossed. Yeah. So I'm going to try and share both in this. That's great. Thank you so much for those book recommendations. Now, before we go, can you tell people about the different services that you offer? Yes. So um, my website is Tell Me Our Story. It is from the, it was named for the point of view of the child asking the parent to tell me our story. And I offer, I help people um, on the ancestral healing side or, or building their ancestral tree for them. I actually do the research. So that is something that I offer people. And for those who really just are in the grieving process and want somebody to help them through the grieving process and to work through some things that way. I can give them um, tools to use and that we go through that understanding the mind, body and spirit side of grieving and how to help them open up spiritually. So, and I do that, or I offer it all together as a package that would be all together where we would be doing both, you know, looking up the ancestry. So there are ways to, um, to, go in and um, get like a 90 minute session with me or also to go in and we can build a bigger pack package. And I offer a 10% discount to um, anybody listening. And that it would be the advisor 10 is what you, the code, the coupon code that you would put in. Um, and I also have a 30 minute free session. So if somebody wants to just ask some extra questions or to uh, share a little bit about their story or see if this is something that they would want to do, they can also go in and um, spend, you know, sign up for 30 minutes with me. This is amazing. Oh my God. Like always, Bernadette, this is wonderful. You have so much valuable information to share. And I love it because you are such a spiritual person and you're connected with the spirits and you, you do things so differently. And I love how you go into the past and you go into the history of the ancestral and you look into the genealogy and, and, and you really like, you know, people don't really think about, you know, who their ancestors are all the time. They just look at their closest ancestors, like grandmother, great grandmother, but they don't go farther than that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those people could be watching over you. And then if you really understand the history of their behaviors and makes you have a better understanding of why you are the way you are and who you are because right. of that. And also the ability to learn how to connect with those people is really amazing. So you do a lot of great, great things. So oh, thank you, Stacy. Thank you. You do amazing work as well. <laughs> thank you. Well, Bernadette, have a great night. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank you so much for sharing all this wonderful advice.
Right. So, and we can find it at Spotify and, and uh, link, not LinkedIn, but um, YouTube and it's on everything. So if you want to find Bernadette's uh, podcast, you can, one way you can go is you can go on YouTube, YouTube, you'll see her actual video. You can also have her podcast is on the uh, advisor channel. And um, you could also go on to any audio distribution channel, which is um, Amazon, Audible, Spotify, um, Apple, um, uh, Castbox, all of them. So everywhere you where you go where they have podcasts, if you type in Bernadette Thompson's name, it will, her podcast will pop up, and you'll see all the information and all her podcasts that she's done on her podcast. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great night. Thanks.